Hey, welcome back to me being cheap. Tonight, I'm going to talk to you about recovering your deck cushions, so for your outdoor patio furniture. So I'll talk first about the pillows. This is the easiest ones to do. This really only makes sense if you have the existing uh, cushions or pillows and if you've got some extra fabric laying around. The reason why I say that is I was at my local big box store the other day and I saw some square pillows and they were only about $3.88 a piece. So unless you like sewing and have the materials on hand, it is not cost effective to do it from scratch. Uh, but I'll show you uh, some of the pillows I had. And as you can see, this one is a little dingy. Um, it has mildew on it. And I did try uh, washing this with a little bit of bleach. Um, it, it's still pretty dirty. It's not going to come clean. Um, I had actually picked these up secondhand, and uh, so I did not pay very much for these at all. Of course, they were cleaner when I got them secondhand. The way this one was actually manufactured is uh, they didn't sew it together and they just put safety pins. And I guess that was to allow uh, to be able to undo the safety pin and just wash the cover. Um, I did it a little bit differently uh, when I redid mine. So this, this is the finished product. It was a set of two and I recovered it with some uh, orange and yellow type flowered material. So here's a comparison. So the first thing that you need is one of these seam rippers like this. Many people that sew have these laying around. Um, you can also get, get them at your local hobby store or Walmart, what have you. Uh, but you need to rip apart the pillow so that you can use it as a pattern. And I ended up with uh, two identical pieces like this. And um, basically you just iron it flat. I think this is the one I used. Uh, you just iron it flat and uh, put it down on the material that you want to use, pin it down, cut around it pretty simple. And then, I don't know if you can see this or not, they actually have like a little hem. Now I ripped it all apart so it's not stitched down. Um, but you can just iron that down and then when you go to sew the two together, you have a finished edge all the way around and then you can stitch them, stitch them together like this. So you, the edge ends up like this. Anyway, it was pretty simple. And again, I sewed, I sewed it completely shut. I did not leave it open with safety pins. Um, but anyway, I do recommend that you wash these really good before you recover them. I do have a high capacity washer that these pillows will actually fit in. So that's the easy one of the two. And again, this is not cost effective unless you already have the pillows and fabric. Um, I had bought this fabric for another project that I never got around to, so I figure um, cushions outside is something that I needed, and my existing cushions were pretty funky, so um, again, otherwise you could get those pretty cheap at Walmart. So I'll put this aside, and then we'll talk about the big cushions, and these tend to be costly if you buy these. Go ahead and put this down here. Okay, so this is pretty gross. Um, it's a combination of uh, mildew and also some funk. Uh, my cat, uh, she had chronic sores on her and she was an outdoor cat. And so she was usually um, always had these weeping sores. We couldn't get them under control and I had to put her down not too long ago. But there is mildew on this too. So um, I did wash these really good uh, with bleach. And again, taking your seam ripper and ripping it apart. And uh, you can do this while watching TV. Um, you know, sometime when you just sit down and have a little bit of time, just take your little seam ripper and disassemble it. You want to save the pieces though because you're going to want to use it as a pattern. So this is what I ended up with. I ended up with two of these, and this is the cording trim around the side, which would be this part right here. And there's actually some rope in there. And I can open it up a little bit, and that's what the rope looks like. Okay, so you want to save that. And these are actually 
not too dirty. It's just the top and the bottom of the cushion. So I may actually just reuse this or I may attempt to recover it. I haven't decided yet. I am going with a similar color scheme. So I could just reuse this without having to cut, you know, a tiny piece of fabric. But you'll have two of these and you want to save that. Okay, so you'll have one side of the cushion and again, this one is not too dirty. Um, this is actually quilted and uh, this material has been thoroughly washed and bleached. Um, so I think I'm actually going to reuse this to give it a little bit more fluffiness. I am going to recover it though. So you've got the, the bottom of the cushion. You have the top of the cushion. Again, pretty dirty, but it has been bleached. It's clean. Um, and then you have this little piece that is the side of the cushion. That would be this piece right here. Now, I did save the buttons off of this. They look like this. And I'm, I'm guessing there's probably a way that I could recover them. I have not figured out how to take it apart though. Um, so anyway, what you're going to do after you disassemble the fabric for your cushion, is you're going to um, use some new fabric and use this as a pattern and cut around it. And I will show you what I'm going to use, although I've got to do a couple more steps before I film the next step. Um, I bought some fat quarters years ago and I was going to make a quilt and that quilt never happened. You know how everybody gets real busy. And so, the material has just been sitting there for quite some time. And it's in the colors that I need. Um, you know, it's the same kind of aqua and green and brown and white. And so the colors are perfect. But the thing is, is that these pieces are not big enough to make one of these cushions out of. So if I hold this up, and then hold this up, you can see it's not big enough. So really what I'm going to have to do is piece together four pieces like a patchwork quilt, which I think it might look kind of cute to have all these mix and match patterns, but I'm gonna have to piece four together for the front and then four together for the bottom. And um, then I'll also have to put some around the side as well I don't know. Um, this actually isn't too dirty. I, I might be able to get by with using this again. Or, um, you know, I'll have some leftover trimmings uh, from where I've pieced these together. Um, I'll probably have enough to make this piece as well. But I've got lots of cute fabric here that I can use to recover these. And again, I don't know how cost effective this is unless you already happen to have the fabric around. But the cushions like this, the bigger cushions, a lot of times they tend to be kind of pricey. And these two um, are the perfect size. I bought a little bench that somebody had made out of a headboard on a full bed. And so it's kind of an awkward size, but these two cushions fit nicely side by side. And so I'm not sure that I would actually be able to find um, some replacement cushions very easily. I haven't seen anything quite like that at Walmart. Um, I'm limited in shopping places around here unless I went you know, up to Wichita or ordered something off the internet. But again, um, this was supposed to be a quilt. Um, I bought a whole stack of fat quarters. I have uh, probably a lot more of them left too. Here we have a solid green and a solid blue and like this little paisley. So um, what I need to do before I come back and film this next part is I need to piece these together, um, four of them together, and then lay out the, uh, the top and the bottom of the cushion and pin those down and then show you how I cut them out. And then I will show you how I sew them together. Um, but anyway, this is, I guess you could say basically free. Um, I had already bought the fabric I think I bought this fabric back in 2008 and I never used it and it's 2018 so we're talking 10 years this fabric's been sitting in my sewing 
materials. So I will check in with you in a couple days when I get some chance to work on this. All right, thanks for watching. All right, this is the next step. If you're having to piece pieces of material together in order to have a large enough piece to cover your cushions. Now for me, I'm using uh, fat quarters, and so they are not big enough to cover uh, one side. I'm actually going to have to piece four pieces together. Okay, so there's an edge here, and I have it lined up both edges, and I have the material right side facing each other, and I have it lined up down this edge, and then down this edge. The next thing that I'm going to do is using the guide on my sewing machine, I'm going to sew about a quarter inch quarter inch seam down the long way and then I'm going to sew all of them in pairs of two down the long length of the material and then once we get those done we'll join um, we'll join them together okay so here I am at my old sewing machine and I was going to show you most Sewing machines have some sort of indication uh, of measurement or something that you can line up on. And for this particular machine, um, this little thing right here, this edge, is a quarter of an inch from where the needle actually sews. So when I put my material in here, I'm going to line it up along this edge. And I apologize for the bad camera angle. I know I've gotten some feedback on this before. I just really don't have a good way to film while sewing. So I'm going to try place the camera like this. Maybe we'll come at it a little from the front. I'll try that. Okay, again checking to make sure that my material is still lined up. Okay, I repeated that process eight times. So we have eight groups of two fabrics joined together. And the next thing that we're going to do uh, before we sew them into groups of four is we are going to do some ironing. I gotta figure out how to do this one-handed. Let's see if I set this down. So the first thing we're going to do is iron it on the right side and then we're going to flip it over and iron it the other way. I just want to pull that tight. Make sure we have a nice crisp seam. Okay, now we'll flip it over next thing we're going to do is we're going to iron it all one direction. So this way, this time I'm going to iron this direction. The next batch I do, I'm going to alternate and I'm going to have the seam laying this direction. So for this one, we're going this way. Next group, we go that way. So we had the direction going this way. I'm gonna go set this one aside and I'll come right back. I'm going to repeat the process. We're gonna iron this seam flat, then we're gonna turn around and press it down.
Now this time we have the seam laying this way. I just need to repeat this process quite a few more times. Alright, so the next step. Uh, we have our eight groups of two that we've sewed together and now we're going to join them into groups of four. And so what I have done is I have placed them right side facing each other and then over here we have the seam going this way and then on the back side we have the seam going that way and I have tried to match up as perfectly as possible the hem or the seam. Alright so we'll go over to the sewing machine and sew these together and basically you'll repeat the same process four times and that'll give you a large uh, square to cut each side of the cushion out of. And even though I trimmed up this fabric, as you can see, it's not completely even. So I'm going to pick up and pick an arbitrary spot and line up on it. And this one's probably going to be a little bit greater than an eighth of an inch, just so that we can grasp all the edges of the fabric. The next step will be to iron it. All right. Press this hem flat. Not hem, seam. Okay, so we have a large piece of material that we can cut the front or the back side of the cushion. So I need to repeat this entire process four times. So start with your four squares that you've sewn together and then using the old top half of the cushion, lay it out. Um, aiming for the middle of the cushion to be where the four squares come together and then pin it out and then you're actually going to cut around this using this as the pattern and then you will repeat that for the bottom side of the cushion. Okay, so I have cut the material out using the front of the cushion as a pattern and I'm actually going to keep the original material to add a little bit more bulk to the cushion cover. This next part is a little bit tricky. I'm going to try and zoom in and explain what I'm doing. Um, I'm actually reusing this cording that came on the original cushion. If I needed to, I could just keep the cord out of it and put new material on, on here, uh, but this is still in good condition. It's not stained or torn. So I'm using that, and in addition, I'm using the fabric from the side of the cushion as well. Um, if I needed to, I could easily cut new strips of fabric for the side as well. But these were still um, in good condition. They're not ripped, they're not stained, and they match the general color scheme. So I am going to reuse those. Now, what I have done is I've started pinning the three pieces together, and once I sew it, it will look like this. Um, but the way that I am putting it together, 
So I've got the cushion facing with the material side down. And then I am lining up. Let's see, I'm hoping this is picking up. This material on the cording, I'm lining it up to the edge of the top of the cushion material. And then I'm adding the side strip to it as well. And then I'm pinning it. And then the result is this. So when you sew, you're going to want to sew right along here, right by the edge of that cording to make a nice tight seam. And I sure hope that's picking up. Anyway, this is something you can do while sitting on the couch. I'm actually gonna sit down and finish uh, pinning this around and then I will go to the sewing machine and sew it. Thanks for watching. Okay, so in the last video segment, I showed you how I stacked the three individual pieces together. So we have the side piece, we have the rope trim, and then we actually have the top of the cushion. And I stacked those three together and then I sewed as close as I could to the rope piece. So we have the top part completed. Now we need to do is attach this bottom part but before I do that I actually missed a piece here I don't know if you could see that so I need to sew this again I evidently yeah you can see I didn't get close enough to the rope here so I'm gonna have to re-sew that and then we will repeat the uh, process turn it over and then use um, this rope trim here and go ahead and attach the bottom and that will leave um, the cushion open on one end and then I will reuse the stuffing that has been washed and uh, then attach the uh, buttons and I'm not sure if I can recover those buttons yet or not I've still got to work on that and then sew the end shut and then this cushion will be done so I will catch up to you in a bit All right, welcome back to me being cheap. I've done a little bit more on this cushion cover. So I've uh, attached the trim. We have the side panel, and then we have the trim on the other side as well. Now, what needs some attention is the back side of the cushion. And of course I reused the, the trim, and I reused the side panel. But, I don't know if you can see, we don't have quite enough of the trim to go around. Not quite sure how that happened. We're a little bit short and we're a little bit short on the side panel. So what I've actually done is I've cut out another piece. We're going to piece this in here on the side panel and then you know, use what you have if you're doing a project like this. Don't go out and buy stuff. I mean, you could even do this with uh, old blue jeans, and if you had some old rope or something, you could actually do this. I had some leftover trim. Um, this was a curtain project. I don't even have these curtains anymore that I had made. Um, but anyway, I'm actually going to cover this little corded area with a strip of material. just do it like this and here we have some of the trim that goes on the edge of the cushion some of this stuff okay so what I need to do next is sew in this piece and uh, get that sewed together and then ultimately I'll sew it all and then I'll leave enough of a hole uh, because I have to sew this from uh, the wrong side so I have to actually turn this inside out and then sew but I'm going to leave a big enough hole where I could actually turn it inside out then I'll put in the stuffing and then I'll have to sew it shut by hand so um, let me go ahead and turn this inside out And again, I actually reused the original pieces of the top part because it was kind of thick and quilted. It gave a little bit more 
substance uh, to the cushion. I just put new fabric on top. So again, not the best camera angles sewing in the sewing room. I have not had a chance to figure out a good way to do it. So again, when you want to sew these three layers together, this is the raw edge of the top of the cushion, and then you're going to line up the piece of trim, and then line up the side panel. And I find it helps if I pin it together. So I'm actually going to tuck this in here. I apologize guys, I just really don't have a good way to film these sewing segments. So here, the other edge, we do have enough of this to join here. I think we need to let some out of here, so we've got a big gap. And the good news is, is this is on the back side of the cushion, so it's not going to show if it's not 100% perfect. So this may not look pretty, but I have the patched in piece, I have the original side, the original side, and I've joined it all the way to the other edge. So now we just have to sew, and all we have left is the other opening, and we will sew it mostly shut allow enough to be able to turn it inside out, fill it with stuffing, and then we'll have to finish the, um, the remaining by hand. And when you're sewing this, you really just kind of have to feel for that edge of that cording, and you want to sew right up on it. Pins.
ready to add the stuffing. I did miss this little area. I'm going to have to tuck this in and hand sew it right there. Did leave an opening for the stuffing. And then we'll have to sew the rest of it by hand. So I will go stuff it and then I'll check back in with you. I'm hand sewing the last little bit. This is the hole that I used to put the stuffing inside. I'm hand sewing this trim on and then I'll attach this. All right, so I've hand sewed the remaining amount. I've got the cushion stuffed. Now all I need to do is attach the buttons. And these are the buttons that are left over. And as you can see, four of them are dirty, four of them are clean. And I just, I, I'm sure there's a way these come apart. I'm just not figuring it out. There's probably some sort of tool. Um, I just won't use these. Um, I did find some other buttons that I could use so if you're doing something like this you know don't go out and buy new stuff just use what you have um, and make it work so I'm going to sew these and then uh, then I'll be done all right join back with you in just a bit okay so here's the before and here's the after um, it looks like this one is slightly bigger somehow um, and maybe not as fat but uh, I think it turned out pretty good it's got two sides so again just use what you have um, you could make this with old clothes blue jeans what have you uh, just use what you have and again I uh, kept the same original side pieces and the uh, the, the piping trim that goes along the edge 